Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing a slightly sillier <laughs> replay today. Um, so I played this game before the patch, I don't know, uh, 10 days ago maybe? It was a while. Um, but it was a pretty funny game. <laughs> um, and it highlighted something that I think needs to be taken advantage of more in public matchmaking. And that is the idea that there is there needs to be a lot less focus on what is currently in the meta. And instead, I think that players should play to what they enjoy and are the most successful at, um, in my opinion. Not necessarily the most popular opinion. Um, there is a big trend uh, in spamming particular heroes so that you can uh, raise MMR very quickly. Uh, and I'm not totally against that. I mean, I used to do it a bunch when I played Storm. Um, just before he got super popular, I played him a bunch, and I that was my highest MMR. Um, but that was because I liked the hero. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, so I put awfully in Ember Spirit this game, which is pretty cheesy. Uh, I picked Ember one to go mid, but um, our Storm Spirit last picked Storm and said I mid. Uh, so instead of fighting over left sits in the mid lane, I decided, all right, it's fine. Uh, they can't really kill me at level one uh, unless they get pretty lucky. So um, I'll just play off lane Ember Spirit. Uh, so I started out with a Stoke Shield Tango and two Mangoes. Um, Ember Spirit's pretty man independent, so I thought the Mangoes are pretty good. Stoke Shield, obvious. Uh, Tango's obvious. Um, so I end up being solo uh, for most of it. Avenge comes down for a bottom comes down bottom for a bit, but uh, against Bristleback Marana, uh, unless Marana hits a long arrow, um, they can't really kill me. Uh, I, I need to make a serious misplay for me to die, and just need to get chased down by, by Bristleback somehow, or get hit by an arrow. Um, and sometimes arrows are unavoidable. Um, uh, you do get, you know, you get trapped in, or slowed, or they come from fog, and you just can't see them in time. Um, but uh, most of the time, they, you can avoid them, um, especially because this, this player does not seem particularly comfortable on uh, Marana, so he's not shooting from odd angles or shooting through the trees. Um, all the arrows he throws are more or less pretty easily dodgeable. Uh, so yeah, Venge comes bottom for a bit, um, but I we realize that there's no real way for us to kill this lane, um, so there's no real point in her being here. Um, she's much more effective either stacking in the jungle um, for Juggernaut or Storm or myself, or um, roaming uh, on mid lane or on top lane. Um, I suppose, in theory, we might be able to kill Marana, but with uh, Leap and levels of stuns that we would get from sharing experience, we would be able to kill. Um, so the game starts out pretty well. Um, I get a better creep block off, and because they're fighting over last hits, uh, I am able to get early last hits um, because the creep wave is so close to my tower, so I can do it without being in danger. Uh, I think that I should have definitely picked up an earlier uh, magic stick here uh, against Bristleback and Marana, both who are fairly spam heavy. I feel like it is a good pickup, and I also feel like it's just an item I don't pick it up enough um, in, in general. Uh, I definitely undervalue it. I used to pick it up a bunch. For some reason, I stopped. I think um, because I've been playing a bunch of mid lane, um, I tend not to do it because I am matched up against agi heroes a lot. They don't tend to spam with spells, so it's just not something I think of. But I definitely need to do it, especially in this scenario. Uh, I do end up doing it a little bit later, but um, not early on. I can't get to the side shop, and our courier stays in constant use for the first couple of minutes, so I, I don't get any of my items, unfortunately. Um, of course, I could go to the side shop if I put myself in danger, but it's really not worth it. It's easier for me just to keep the items in my stash and bring them out eventually. Um, my last hits are okay at this point. Um, the benchmark I like to have is 25 CS by 5 minutes. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty confident at that point uh, that I'm doing okay. I'm not doing great at that point, but I'm doing okay. I think I've talked about this before in another video, um, and I wasn't sure if it was 10 or 5. Um... It's not always something I think about very often number-wise. It's just kind of like where I feel like I am at at the game. Um, because I am playing offline this game, it would I would expect it to be lower than when I typically play 
what the 25 CS to 5 minutes is for the mid lane. Um, but because I'm playing off lane, I would expect it to be lower. However, my CS ends up being quite high this game just because they put themselves in very dis disadvantageous situations by pushing the, the tower into the wave and by leaving the lane for no apparent reason. Um, I'm able to get quite a bit out of this off lane. Um, so the build on Ember Spirit, um, I think it's 2 1 2. Then you max Flame Guard, and you only put one point in your ultimate, and then you max Sleight of Fist. I believe that's right. Um, I think that's what I go this game. Oh, apparently 203 is what I go this game. Um, Sleight of Fist has a very long cooldown, but it scales incredibly well. Uh, part of the things about Ember that makes him such a unique hero is that he's highly mobile, um, and his physical damage scales. And his physical damage that scales incredibly well into the late game with the use of his skills. Um, he's one of the very few, I would say. Yeah, I guess he's one of the very few carries that um, his activatables get better the longer you go on. Most carries, their activatables get worse, and their um, their stats and their passives become a lot more valuable as the game wears on. But that is not the case for him. Uh, Windrunner picks up a regeneration rune, so she must have just been using the last of her mana in her bottle. Um, I was a little bit afraid I was going to get ganked there. I could get GG shackled and just get wrecked. Um, the start of this game, we actually end up losing our top lane pretty hard. Um, but middle and bottom go quite well for us, which is nice. Um, I'm only going to watch pretty much the winning stage of this game. Uh, I'm going to speed through the rest of it because uh, Bruce Black does end up leaving. But until then, it is a fairly good point. All right, so here we are at 17 minutes in the offlane at 5 minutes. Sorry, 17 last hits at 5 minutes in the offlane. I'm completely okay with this. Uh, if we take a little pause here, I would like to take a look at um, the graphs. I'm about to get dove here, I believe. Uh, and we're just a little bit ahead, even though uh, we have a we have a slight kill lead, but um, not enough. Yeah, that's probably right. It is probably mostly kill lead. Um, our CS is pretty even all across the board. Our Juggernaut's having a really hard time farming against Invoker Silencer. It's kind of a pain of a matchup, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but he surely, surely should not be doing this poorly. Um, we can continue, I guess. Um... So this, they have no real way to break my flame guard here, so it makes pushing the wave out a lot easier and keeping the, the creep equilibrium advantageous. Uh, here I get dove, um, and my stick saves me. Um, I actually had to put down another remnant uh, so I can get out, because they died me all the way to the tier 2 where my previous safety remnant was. Um, and then I end up getting a bristleback kill here somehow. Um, he overextends into the tower and just dies. I didn't realize it until I got back to base, and I saw that he was also dead. Had some extra gold, which was super... Super nice. <sighs> I was very confused. Um, the double mango allows me to stay in the lane for a lot longer than I would be able to otherwise, which um, is really awesome. Uh, I don't end up using the burst mana that often. I think I'll use it. I think I'll use one of them for a burst mana heal. I think I end the game with the other. Um, but it, in theory, uh, being able to get enough mana to do your combo. Um, off of two mangoes would just to get a kill would be totally worth it. Plus the lane sustain, it gives you the same base regen as Nyx, and that's pretty insane. Um, I waste a little bit of time here, I believe. I head into the jungle trying to maximize the use of my flame guard. I thought I had a longer on it, um, and then I realized that I can't actually kill this camp. Um, but because of the position of the wave and the fact that they're off, uh, that Bristleback is top, I actually definitely could have stayed bottom. Instead, I decided to try to go for a gank. Um, but there is negative communication between me and Pink. Um, I was planning on going mid, and then when he decided he wanted to go mid, there was some uh, inner strife, to put it politely. Um, so I zip back up to top or bottom because I realized that I can't get a bit, I uh, can't get a kill mid, um, and just go back to farming. Um, I think the biggest thing for me to notice this game is that I definitely am very inefficient with my time. Um, add that as ex exemplified right there. Um, I definitely could have gotten more levels here. Uh, Ember Spirit is very level dependent. Um, you really want to get that max Sword of Fist so that you can utilize the fullest effect of any any proc abilities that you have, whether it be, I guess, Battle Fury isn't really a proc ability, but um, Battle Fury or Desolator or Skady or Maelstrom all proc on Sword of Fist, which is which is really great, um, and it allows you to uh, to have a larger impact on the team fight than you would originally think. So there we go. I eat the mango there and. I end up getting a kill, which is really exciting. I was pretty stoked on that. 
Um, so now at this point, I should be turning my Aquila on because no one's in the lane, and I know that Bristleback is mid, so I should just be pushing the tower. Instead, I go to the jungle, or I go to secure the rune, actually. Um, and I end up taking it from the Storm Spirit because I'm an asshole. Um, I build this game as I decided I wanted to go, um... I wanted to go for Boots of Travel um, because my I, I felt like this game was actually going to go quite poorly. Um, Offline Ember Spirit, I didn't expect for it to be, you know, doing this well. Um, second in net worth at the eight minute mark, I didn't expect for that to happen. Um, so I was I was expecting to have to be able to split push away to victory um, and really just be able to force them around the map. They don't have a particularly good. Uh, team for breaching high ground aside from um, Silencer, Windrunner. Um, you can just global and all to the tower and it uh, really does some damage. I was trying to get a little bit of, a little bit of farm out of this ancient camp, but I fucked it up and I actually ended up having to going back to lane. I waste a lot of time here. This is another example of why I need to maximize my efficiency. With only a pot in lane, there's no reason I need to be scared even at the tower. I could definitely have just taken the rune and gone back to mid, or gone back to bottom lane, or even just stayed bottom lane. Um, another big thing of this game is that I had uh, I had the CM aura, which made um, lane sustain a lot easier. It means that I can spam up my my fling bread almost on cooldown. Uh, I don't think that I would have done nearly as well had I not had that aura. So I go back here to heal up because I'm an efficient shitbag. <sighs> I miss my my searing chain sort of fist combo. Uh, I realized after this game, or maybe midway through this game, um, I have not I'm not very experienced on Ember Spirit, um, but it is a hero that I find really interesting. So I wanted to learn how to play it. But I realized that shift queuing that is my best option, um, especially when there's only one target. When there's more than one target, it's not that big of a deal because um, you have enough time easily to interact. But when it's only one target, you have something like a twenty fifth of a second or something like that. Um, to, uh, to get your searing chains off, and I, my reactions are simply not good enough um, for, to feel comfortable doing that, so I uh, I just shift Q. Uh, there I get a very fortuitous regen rune, it means me I can farm this jungle camp finally. Um, but still, there's no reason for me to be not in lane. Um, there's math somewhere uh, that I read about the inefficiency of jungling versus lane. Um, and I definitely am not getting the most out of my, my time right now. Especially with uh, creeps this close to my tower. There's effectively no uh, risk when uh, I know that Winter is on the map. That's, that's, my real, that's my real issue right now. Um, so I come back to lane finally. Uh, I'm almost at my bo boots of travel, um, which is exciting. Uh, I want to get those uh, as early as I can so I can move around the map. Be helpful in uh, team fights and ganks, and uh, really just be able to pull the team all over the map. Uh, so Storm jumps in here. We stack our stuns. I didn't realize that he had actually gone for a max vortex build here. Um, uh, he went one three three instead of the more typical now um, three one three. Uh, so that's why I stacked my stun there. Um, just me being a little bit inefficient. Thankfully, she didn't get a leap off anyways, so we got the kill, which is good. I'm not positive you can leap through root, but I don't believe that you can. Um, or chains, sorry. It's not technically a root. So 11 minutes, I have 40 CS. Um, but more importantly, uh, I have two and a half or two kills and assist, and I have not died, which is very important. It means that uh, I'm level 9 at 12 minutes in the offlane as a solo Ember Spirit, which is a very big deal. Um, and as stated, this here is very level dependent, so I am really feeling the uh, the advantages of of getting all this free XP. Um, and now, uh, because I'm effectively fearless, they really need to time their spells quite well um, for me to me to die here. So uh, I feel like I can cut the creep camp here. I, I know that Invoker is dead. Um, I know that uh, Windrunner was forced back, and that bottom was top. So that's three of their disables, and I know that Global Silence is down. So I'm very safe there. I can always jump out. I'm feeling no pressure. Um, so this is the real thing you do here with Ember Spirit. You use your Remnant and uh, Boots Travel combo to really maximize your efficiency. Um, get back to Fountain as much as you can while still split pushing. It means that you waste very little time in traversing. Uh, Silencer comes down here to try to kill. Um, this is uh, the previous patch, as I mentioned, so I don't end up getting whatever his new ability is. Um, again, there's a, a good example of the stick saving me. Um, at this point, I actually consider going back to base. I think I try to go to secure the rune, but I'm not positive. 
I definitely could have gone for the rune. Um, I don't think either one got it, so. Uh, oh, maybe Storm Spirit picked up the, that invisible rune in this cycle, I'm not sure. Anyways, I'll go back to base, leave a remnant back in the bottom lane. Um, and at this point, uh, we are fairly far ahead, 17 to 8, and we're outlasting both of them, or all their cores. And. Um, Bristleback is gone, so this game's effectively over. But um, I'm going to speed through the rest of it while I talk about it. Um, this is like just having the just pause. I'm going to turn the volume down here, too. Um, so, what is really interesting about this game um, is that it really. I've definitely fallen into a pattern where I. I'm unconfident enough that I believe the only way for me to win is to have an advantageous matchup. Um, and that typically means having a meta pick, you know, whether it, you know, be be Ember, I guess, actually. Ember mid is a pretty meta pick. Or uh, TA or Tiny. Uh, all these heroes that are that are considered strong right now or, or have a very advantageous winning matchup um, where I feel like I really need to succeed. Um, but this game, uh, and it was ranked. I think it was calibrating, actually. Um, it was a couple, a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago, so I don't really remember. Um, but I think that uh, it's important to remember that, especially in pubs, and you know, this this goes for a lot of things. I mean, I've seen um, people stream at a much higher level than I am, which isn't saying much. Uh, but I've seen uh, people stream very unorthodox builds um, and laning setups and make it still work in pubs because there's just less communication. Um, so if you have uh, either the natural skill to outskill your opponent or the communication on your team that you believe the other team doesn't, you can definitely take advantage of that and have some more interesting laning setups um, or item builds. Uh, my favorite, I think, that I've seen in the last little while was the uh, the Merlini uh, Medusa that went Solar Crust first so that he could fight early, which was a very interesting build, and I'm not sure that they would ever work in a professional game, but I don't think that necessarily that's where our benchmark should be. Um, they're a good place, but, you know, not always the best. Then again, we also have things in pub metas like the new ancient jungle, or the ancient stacking Marana and the previous necro stacking Marana that um, have been popular, and they're just awful and they make me sad. Um, so... Uh, I think over the next couple of days, because um, I'm, I'm leaving, uh, I'm leaving my apartment for uh, ten days over the Christmas break. Um, There's some family and friends, which should be nice. Uh, but I will be back in the new year with more Dota content to get ignored. Um, but it's fun, so that's really why I'm doing it. And hopefully, it's helping me get better. I don't think it is. I think I'm still equally as trash as I was when I started. Uh, but hey, it's fun. Um, over the next couple of days, uh, I think that I want to focus more on playing some new heroes. The, the 6.86 um, meta, as it will, has changed a lot. Uh, I definitely need to work. I was definitely working on my efficiency in the jungle, and now all of that work is effectively gone um, because the jungle is completely different. Um, but I suppose the principles of time management still persist, so there is that. Um, but my my goal is to is to play some more heroes. I think that I want to try offlane LC. I think that's where she's the strongest. Um, and with the new not Dragon Lance uh, Eagle Talon or something, um, I think that you can really use uh, maximize your efficiency quite a bit by doing the enemy's jungle uh, rather quickly. Um, which should be an interesting idea. I think I might play a couple games of that, maybe make a video on it. Um, I definitely do want to expand my hero pool. I think that I I want to play more active heroes. I definitely under gank as a player. Um, in mid and otherwise, the only hero that I really play comfortably in a ganking role is Clockwork. Um, and even he got changed, uh, so that should be interesting. Um... Anything else? Oh yeah, if this game had been a lot more serious, if this even a little more serious, if this goes back and stuck around, I think that I would have needed to go defensive item here. Um, getting the battle fury is really good, and I think that I definitely would have gone that right after my boots of travel. Um, but at that point, I think I would have needed to go on either Lincoln's or BKB. 
Um, with the Windrunner, Silencer, and Potom, and also Invoker, there's a lot of lockdown on their team. Um, so I definitely would have felt pressured to get a defensive item. Um, but another thing that should be noted, I think, uh, is that uh, there is a good way... Um, there's a good thing about this game with me and Ember, or me and Storm Spirit and uh, Juggernaut. We're all very active heroes, which means that we are going to be the focus of a lot of lockdown. Um, which means that it's it's very unlikely that they're able to lock all of us down at once. Uh, and even with CM with her ulti, you want to save a save a, some sort of disable for that, whether it be a silence or a stun or something. Um, I definitely think that. Having more heroes that require suns and lockdowns makes it easier to play Greer and not go for a defensive item. All right, so that was that was this game. It was pretty clowny. I didn't end up dying. Uh, Tobo and Ten is off when Ember Spirit. That should never happen. But um, I think the point is that even with the even if had Bristleback stayed around, I definitely would have died more if this had been a more serious game. But um, I definitely think that I played well. Quite okay. I do need to work on my last hitting quite a bit. Uh, my lane control is definitely getting better. Um, understanding that uh, when to pull the creeps to your ranged creep and not just where you want the creeps, oh, excuse me, but how to get them there. Um, I'm definitely working on that. Uh, I really want Storm to be popular again. I love that hero. Not even popular, just playable. Uh, I think that the nerfs to him were a little bit too strong or too much. Um, the electric vortex nerf is, is pretty cool. I understand that the idea with the hero right now is to make him less farm intensive and more gank intensive. Um, but his landing stage has effectively been ruined just by the way that they changed uh, his static remnant and also now the, the nurse to the bottom mana. Bottle mana uh, really change what the hero is capable of. Um, but I'm sure that you have seen better patch analysis than that uh, because they're people that are a lot smarter than me in the Dota community. All right, um, I'll be back in a couple of days with another video, I think. Um, probably on Sunday. Probably on Sunday. I have work until then, and then Sunday I'm packing and getting my place ready to move. Or not move. Getting my place ready to uh, go away for a week. Making sure that it's clean and stuff, so when I get back I don't have to deal with that. And hopefully I will see you again. Bye.